Okay, so many of you that follow the news know of this story where 900 employees um, over a Zoom call were just cut uh, from better.com. Um, Google the story if you want all the details. Now, I've been through this, guys. I have been let go, uh, and it is not good. Uh, it is a bad thing, especially two and a half weeks before Christmas. Uh, but this is typically when these uh, big sweeping moves sometimes happen with companies that are looking at the quarter and the numbers. And if they do not balance well, the most expensive thing often is staff. And that's when it happens. And um, I wanted to share my story and I have never talked about this publicly. So I'm going to share this story. And if you are working in a place where things might be uncertain, uh, this is a great video to listen to uh, just to get prepared if you are ever in this situation. And I kind of knew the writing was on the wall that this would happen to me one day, but when it happened, I was very shocked. And when I heard who told me I lost my job, it's even more shocking because it should have never have came from somebody who wasn't even an employee at the company. I mean, it's just jaw on the floor. We're going to unpack and talk about this because it is messy. Um, so yeah, obviously it's not a good thing when you lose your job right before the holidays because there's enough stress with the holidays. Imagine dealing with that as well. So to tell you my backstory, um, I was with a company for about 14 years. I'm not going to get into the specifics other than to say I was a dutiful employee for 14 years. And the fact that I wasn't fired in the 14 years, I showed up to work and showered and was quite pleasant with everybody. And I so thought that a lot of the people in the room were my friend, but I was very mistaken by that. Uh, so the place I was working at was unionized and the oldest employees were able to secure their jobs. And when these broad sweeping layoffs happened, the younger staffers were picked off one by one. And my number finally came up. Um, at the time, just to give you more of a backstory, um, I had a best friend who passed away. So let's pretend I'm in like Michigan and my friend was in Maine. It was many states away. I was dealing with a funeral and just a devastating loss. You can only imagine a friend of mine, not old, slipped and fell in a bathtub, hit her head in a certain way. And that was it. That's devastation. I was off, you know, on the East Coast dealing with this funeral and it was devastating, devastating uh, to lose somebody that young. Um, I don't even have words for it. And um, like anyone uh, being on social media, Facebook, whatever, I got a message from a friend or a lady I, I dealt with a couple times who worked at the United Way. And this United Way employee who did not work um, at my place of employment. It was just somebody I had met a couple of times, you know, uh, looking at certain accounts and I knew of this person. That's it. But this person added me uh, on Facebook because you know, it's part of Facebook social. You know, everybody's friends. Um, and I accepted the friend request and uh, this person took it upon themselves. They did not know where I was or what I was dealing with and said, I'm sorry, you lost your job. I was like, what? And then I said, look, I'm at such and such place dealing with a funeral, what's going on? Did the place I work at just close? Like what's going on? And so I had the good sense not to respond to the Facebook message, uh, but just to uh, go and call my boss and say, hey, what's going on? And I was informed that there was a big sweeping layoff and my number was up. And because I was the lowest person seniority wise, I could have fought it because I actually wasn't the lowest person. I was going to be let go. And at that point, I just said, okay. And um, when I did get back into town, um, I think I showed up to work at six o'clock in the morning. This is an excellent hack. My luggage that I had used for traveling, I just unpacked all the clothes, brought that luggage set to the office, put everything, all of my little things from the office into that suitcase and left. By 6.03, I was out of there. Didn't have a big sweeping goodbye with everybody. Uh, didn't have a staff brunch. None of that. Um, it was just quick and like a band-aid pulling it off. If they didn't have the respect for me to even say, hey, um, we're going to call her so she doesn't hear this, you know, 17th hand because everybody knew I had lost my job before me and that's basically what I was dealing with. And it was one of these things that it was just um, very, very hurtful. And I just realized I didn't have a single friend in the room. I know that I was dealing with a funeral, but to hear this as idle gossip, 10th hand, that's what hurt the most. Not so much losing my job, but specifically that. 
for those that are like, oh, you should have never walked out on your job like that. Um, I had, I think, like five or six weeks of holiday banked. Um, so they wanted me to work four weeks, but I had like a month's worth of holiday time. So I just used that and decided I was going to be done when I got back. I wasn't going to spend a, a month to look at everybody in their face knowing that, you know, they were at a United Way wine and cheese talking about me and my layoff. So I was done and it was respectfully my choice. Now, I could be mad about that still to this day, but you know what, guys? I let it go. I was not going to let my former workplace or the employees or the lady from the United Way or the gossip or the tea or the this or that um, weigh me down for the rest of my life. I let this go because sometimes the burden of that, it could be so heavy that it can just really weigh you down. And you're like, I didn't have a single friend in the room. Like, how sad is that? Um, and I came to that realization. And, you know, sometimes with the competitive workplace, people are just weird let it go on to bigger and better. Now, a couple things I will suggest if you lose your job or get laid off or whatever is to have a side hustle and have this side hustle while you're working, even if you're just dabbling in it a little bit to say, hey, how does this work? Two fantastic side hustles is DoorDash. So many people make big, big money, especially if you live in a bigger city doing DoorDash, uh, Instacart, whatever it might be, along with eBay. It's amazing the stuff you can resell, even going to the Goodwill and sourcing stuff. Uh, people are pulling six-figure incomes doing that. If you get really good at it or you're fantastic at looking at different items that are rare or, you know, um, discontinued stuff, you can make a lot of money on eBay, Poshmark, Macari, whatever, even if you're an Amazon seller. So I would recommend to have a side hustle. When you're facing a financial hardship, like a job loss, a layoff, whatever. It is so important to be debt free. Um, I know that it might seem impossible to many, but um, at that last job I was talking about, I actually did become debt free using the Dave Ramsey program. And uh, he is uh, one of these people forever a teacher enriching and financial advisor. I just can't say enough great things about him. He helped me to pay off like $30,000 of debt, which was mostly tied up into a car. And I actually found my freedom. So when the layoff did happen, I had money in the bank and it wasn't like I was drowning. Like I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? This didn't hit me like a bus or something that, you know, I couldn't even put my hands around where it would be so impossible just to pay my bills and to stay in my little apartment. Nope. I was debt free and I had some money in the bank. What I also recommend is for you right now, even if you still have a job, to write a, a list of all of your skills, like what you are the best at. And so if there is ever a layoff, a closure, whatever, the world is so unpredictable that you can look at this list and try and decipher what you want to do. What are your dreams? What are your hopes? And what are you really good at? What fires you up? And have a plan. Um, because you never know. Places just close down. We've seen that in the last two years. And people get laid off. We've also seen that in the last many years. And I recommend really having a good nest egg. Dave Ramsey really helped me out. And that side hustle is absolutely critical to make sure that if you lose your job, you'll have something to, um, you know, pay the bills. And even if it's DoorDash, it might not be the most glamorous work. Uh, but a lot of people make a lot of money uh, doing DoorDash. Okay, that's it for this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.